All right, this is the second video for HydroCAD, and up to this point, what we've done is we've defined a set of uh, drainage calculations. In other words, we, the rainfall, we've set the rainfall at uh, either 6 inches or 4.8 inches or 4.2 inches for our area here. I'll show you a few other things in the calculation settings. The time span here we can be changed over time to give you better routing. The different reports you can do, number of hydrograph points, unit hydrograph if you're using that type advanced and resizing for how it automatically does some of this. A lot of this we are not going to be using. Um, we want to kind of get used to the fact that we get to use Bernoulli's equation and that water we want to design our pipes to flow full at about 3 to 10 feet per second um, so that when there are surcharge with the larger rainfall that extra capacity comes to bear. So we typically depending on what the requirements of the municipality are. We will design for our both our ma major drainage system, which is the road and the uh, ditches, etc., one way, and the pipes the other way. It is not untypical to have to divine, uh, do the minor drainage capacity, in other words, the pipes, to either a 10-year storm or a 25-year storm in some cases. And then the road should always be designed so it does not wash away in a 100-year storm. Um, and we'll talk about some of the requirements of, of logic in addition to just basic good engineering there. All right, so you've seen the calculation settings. We have seen that we've defined a subcatchment as having an area with an amount of imperviousness right there, the curve number, and then a time of concentration that will vary depending on the imperviousness, the slope, um, the three things we talked about the day it was raining, that being sheet flow, shallow concentrated flow, and um, just basic uh, ditch flow will make up the amount of time based on a velocity formula it takes for the raindrop to get from the farthest point in the basin to the point where you are measuring. All that said, that's already been done. We can now skip the reach generally when we're doing these programs we're going to go ahead and define what a pond is and I will point out that you do not want to get into defining your ponds uh, with the catch basin mode you just want to fake it out and always use the detention basin with a very small area when you are doing a catch basin so same way you edit you right click you give it a name right away we want to call that perhaps you know sump at Try to keep using these good habits of underscore sump at sag. We don't want to use none. We don't want to use catch basin. We want to tend to use this detention basin. And you'll see why later. It gives you a lot more options for, in terms of both dealing with water coming out by pipe and water that kind of washes over, maybe over the curb or down the, the roadway. So you're going to hit apply there. That's good. At least one storage is required. So here's the, the components of defining a storage area. You have to have basically some description of the topo lines or the storage that's occurring. You need to describe the outlets. One, two, three, four. Those outlets could include either a pipe, a weir over the top, or actually water going into the ground. Some ability to put tail water and some other things in there as well but we are going to be concentrated first and foremost on storage you always want to define your invert slower than the lowest thing in your pond that will allow you eventually even if you've got some dead space underneath the lowest outlet setting the invert lower than your lowest thing will allow you to kind of um mathematically play around with your pond so even if I assume my lowest elevation on the pond is a hundred I might go ahead and put here in terms of custom stage data I might go ahead and and we're going to use custom stage data generally with the surface area or the incremental storage one of those two I'll just use surface area here we're going to start with our bottom of our thing being an elevation of 90 and have an area Again, you see the large units. I can switch that off. I might only have an area there of maybe I can fake it out with maybe two square feet. I could go all the way up to 100 and put that at also two square feet, which means essentially I haven't stored any volume between 90 and 100. You don't need to do this, but it makes things easier later if you're trying to deal with this stuff. And now let's say we started to go up and we have some topo lines, the 101 topo line in that um, 
and that pond might have an area of 100 square feet, etc. Maybe the 105, you have another topo line. So you kind of define this, and just like you defined it a little bit more on the bottom side in terms of the, town, the amount of area, you always want to define this elevation much higher than your top, your, your most high outlet. In other words, you want this computational engine to be able to deal with no matter how high the water gets. So I'll just go ahead and go assume that maybe the top of that is at 106 and maybe that's at 700 square feet. But I'm still going to go up here and divide up to 110 and that might have some sort of very large area of 2,000 square feet. So you define the contour lines basically of your storage. This is going to make your actually something called your storage curve which is a curve which is showing a volume as a function of elevation and if you remember how important elevation is for head for survey you do want to more or less keep these elevations based on the datum you are using in your project that is the storage data we use custom stage data the one thing to remember there we can go to the outlets here and here's where a lot of the power of this is going to be i'm going to start really simply here with a just a one foot diameter i'm sorry a two foot diameter pipe because you know what its area is and so what you can do is you can edit each outlet you have lots of potentials here and we'll talk a lot about those they're all going to take take advantage of bernoulli's equation and manning's equation this fact of elevation energy in other words elevation head pressure head and velocity head being this kind of free exchange you notice here pretty interesting they've added a pump but we're just gonna right now gonna use a culvert and we're gonna give it the invert if you remember the elevation of our invert was gonna be 100 and this is where it's actually coming leaving your pond and let's say it's 99 when it comes out of the other end let's say its length is 100 it gives you the slope. Remember Manning's number, 0 0.013, 0 0.012. There's a look up there. These diameters are going to be very important. We're going to go start with 12. That's the interior diameter, internal diameter. You see right away it gives all this nice calculation, different types of pipes it'll show you. So lots of stuff here. And then eventually this kind of entrance coefficient becomes kind of important. Corrugated metal pipe, uh, reinforced concrete pipe, and CPP, don't know. I'll have to double check that. Corrugated medical pipe, uh, there should be a plastic one in here, but we'll look at it. So you want to really think about basically how this is, uh, what is the end condition of the entrance into the pipe, and that gives you something. Uh, you see this K sub E, that is one of those multipliers for energy loss. In other words, if the K sub E is 0.7, it's going to lose 0.7 of a velocity head worth of energy when it walks or, or comes into that pipe. Hit OK here. You have defined that exit. You always want to also design at least two exits so the program doesn't hiccup on it. So we're going to go ahead and design that other exit up at the 107. And we're going to use a broad crested rectangular weir that's kind of water flowing over the top of something. The length might be, I don't know, 50 feet. So you just want to realize that you want to give it an invert elevation, remember 106. This is going to be essentially, in other words, the water will get up to 106 and then it will spill out. And you can hit OK. Missing coefficient data. Um, we have to give it a breadth. In other words, that's the distance across the top of the weir, maybe four feet. You see this kind of fills it all in. It lets you kind of give it some number so you can keep track of that stuff. Sorry. Four here. All right, so you're going to go ahead and hit OK. You've now done everything. You can actually go through and do some of these kind of other additional things later. You're going to hit OK. Last thing you do now is right-click on this, and you reroute. You tell it node number 2P. Hit OK. Now when you hit a right-click and hit a node report, it will give you both what's coming into the pond and what's leaving the pond. And if you remembered it, um, we had a big pipe there. It's a two foot diameter pike. It's not going to store much water because it's just going to, it's large enough to kind of take all that nine CFS out, even in a hundred year storm. So that pretty much is the program. We'll go into individual parts of that, but this is a program you should try to teach yourself. Download it and do it 
and grab some input when you need to, but learn how to teach yourself software. Thanks for listening.